So, what's your favorite uh, Ghibli movie? If I really had to choose... House Moving Castle. I watched that when I was a kid and I always loved it. How about you? Oh, definitely Princess Mononoke. Oh yeah, oh my god, that's so good! Wait, wait, which one was the one with the black monster with the mask? Oh, you mean Spirited Away? Yes! Oh my god, that's so good! <laughs> Santi, what about you? Kiki Delivery Service? What? What do you mean? Kiki Delivery Kiki Delivery Service is my favorite Ghibli movie! Oh yeah, precisely. Kiki Delivery Service is my favorite movie from Studio Ghibli. And today, after months of waiting and procrastinating, I'm finally explaining why. I have to say, the relationship with this movie for me is kind of religious. I think about this movie like every day. I've been putting off doing this video for a while now and while I was sleeping this night, Kiki came into my dreams and whispered to me to finally record this video. And now I'm here. So, uh, if you don't know, the basic premise of Kiki Delivery Service is basically the biography of Jeff Bezos, if Jeff Bezos was a 13-year-old witch girl with a talking cat. And the thing that elevates this movie to a cinematographic masterpiece is the complete lack of any kind of conflict. What do I mean by that? Well, any other movie would have some kind of conflict to drive the story forward, um, but that's not the case for this movie, because this movie is different and amazing in every way possible. You see, when the movie starts, you'll learn that Kiki, as all witches have to do apparently, has to leave her native town forever like a Pokemon trainer with a terrible mom. And you might think this would be captured as a nostalgic moment or a tragic one, like she's leaving her family forever, this is terrible, but you couldn't be more wrong. In this story, everybody loves Kiki. She's got a lovable mother, a goofy dad, and a whole bunch of friends. When she finally flies away, the entire town comes to say goodbye. But why hasn't she left yet? What's keeping her from fulfilling her destiny? Nothing. She just doesn't feel like it. So anyway, she finally leaves in search for a new town to settle in. And on her way there, she finds her first encounter, another witch. And she acts all bossy like she's the best in the world. Yeah, that's it. That's our main rival right there. That's our Gary, our Sasuke, our Bakugo, our... Good luck to you. Thanks. Goodbye. Never mind. So anyway, she finds a city like right away. And here we're presented with the biggest villain of the movie, the police officer. Thief! Hmm? Thief! Huh? Somebody's stopping me! He's oh. getting away! Stop! Thief! Don't you move from there! I mean, what did you even expect at this point? Anyway, she decides to go full tsundere on this boy that saved her from a speeding ticket, because I mean something has to happen in this movie. Then she meets a lady, she delivers a pacifier, and... Oh my god, Amazon hasn't been invented yet! So she starts her new business at the ladies bakery and now she has to deal with the depression of committing to something and not seeing any results right away. Because, I mean, it takes time to build an audience and I'm sure that if you keep moving forward you too will be able to grow your channel, I mean, uh, your delivery service. As you can see I tend to empathize a lot with Kiki. But finally, it happens, a customer comes with a request. Run, Kiki, run! So after escaping a serial killer, now she has a job. She has to deliver a stuffed cat that looks exactly like hers to some rich suburban child. On her way there, though, she gets attacked by some crows and loses it in the forest. Yeah, I wonder how she's going to get out of this one. So while her cat poses as a plushie, Kiki goes in search for the real fake cat. And it turns out that it's in the hands of the Bob Ross of the woods. And let me tell you, she is terrible. She makes her do some challenges to get the plushie back. And who am I kidding? It turns out she's like super nice and gives it back to her, no problem at all. But let's get back to the cat shenanigans, because that's where the real problems are. A dog is in the house and he's about to realize that the plushie is none other than a witch's cat. 
Ooh, and once he does, it's gonna be a real problem, or not at all. You might be surprised, but it turns out that the dog is actually super nice and gives the cat back no problem at all. Well, this was enough action for one movie. What now? How about a nice Spider-Man 2 plot? You know, like she loses her abilities for a bit. Go on. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Like, uh, she gets jealous and... She can fly anymore or talk to her cat. Hmm. Sounds amazing. Pack your things, boys. We're going home. Wait, wait, wait up, boss. We, we don't even have an ending yet. Gee, Steve, since when do we care about ending things? I thought we just bore people to death until they sleep through the last half hour of the movie. Y yeah, but what about that one guy that really likes the movie and he likes it so much that he's gonna make a video about how great it is and uh, I mean, w what about him, you know? <sighs> All right. What if at the end we see like um a big balloon? Yep, that's right. A big fucking balloon. A giant blip or something has gone rogue, and the idiot child from before is hanging for his life. Fortunately, Kiki has the power of God and anime on her side. And through the power of friendship and also magic, Kiki regains her abilities and saves the day again. And that's literally it. The movie ends, and as the credits roll, you are left with nothing but amazement. And if you think the movie is still not worth it, I don't know what to say to you, uh, you don't deserve it. More for me, I guess. But if you did like it, or you're interested in watching it, welcome to the club, pal. You won't be disappointed, I promise. And before you leave for your hour and 40 minutes of greatness, just leave a like on this video and subscribe to the Hotodogo channel. You know, 100% of my viewers are actually subscribed, cause it's only me, so bye!